Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Justin Lin here at Rehab Revive Physical Therapy, where we rehab the mind to revive your body. We're gonna springboard off our wildly successful 2.5 million views and climbing walking video. We shot that about nine years ago with a small little handheld camera. I mean, it was the best we could do at the time. I used Windows Media Maker and shot that out. And you know, it's helped a lot of people. At that time, we really focused on the glutes and hamstrings and pushing off. And I think it is a very key component to the way one can walk safely and pain-free. But the next thing is the feet. We've get, been getting a lot of questions about what to do with the feet, where to land, how to push off. And we're gonna talk about that next, about how to be more efficient and build on your walking. Stay tuned. So we're going to talk a little bit about some misconceptions and wildly publicized or even published in books, how to run, how to walk, how to whatever with your feet. You know, the most important thing is I think a lot of people really think is that heel to toe rocking. Now, I think that's, you know, not a bad way if you've got some dysfunctions, you know, largely that you got tight hip flexors, you can, you can walk that way. But if you want to go for a more efficient way, you know, you're not going to choose that. A lot of times what happens is it locks out that hip, locks out that knee, which can then create a little bit more force or tension for ACL tears, meniscus tears. And that's what happens as well. Uh, a lot of people also talk about kind of walking more on the forefoot, you know, and even running that way. Now that's not bad if you're really strong. If you're really strong, you can actually do that forefoot. But what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna use your calf muscles, which then unlock your knee, which also sets you up for, guess what? Knee injuries, ACL, and other torn possible tears in those meniscus. And then the last one is that midfoot walker. You're walking a little bit more flat-footed. Now that's cool if you're in flip-flops, but you know, you're not really in flip-flops all day. And I at least would agree that the midfoot has a little bit more give and a little bit of ability to pronate and supinate but we're gonna talk about what it is and where you really need to land. But before we get to that, I need to talk about anatomy. So I kind of talked about hind foot, mid foot, and forefoot. Here's what it is. Here's your, your forefoot. It's basically your toes goes down to this cuneiforms, which go right about here. And then what happens is here's your midfoot section. This is right here. It allows for the arches to rotate, twist, and support your forefoot and also gives control to your hind foot, which is also right here. This is your heel. And this is where I tell people it's a little bit of the rudder. If you land and your rudder slightly off, you're gonna, if you land here, you're gonna twist. If you land here, you're gonna twist. So you almost have to land perfectly right on that. So I'm gonna kind of throw it out there. I'm gonna agree to disagree that where you really need to land is actually in the fore hind foot. So let's just say that again, the four hind foot. It's right at the front, right around where your plantar fascia attaches. It's a little bit in front of the, the so a little bit behind the midfoot, a little bit before the, the hind foot. So I think that's the best place to land. Now, why is that important? That's important because then it sets you up for success. Your body is right over you. And then you have that base of support, that balance to then propel yourself over that forefoot. What has to happen to that forefoot is your, you, your foot hits the ground, it splays forward and out, and then you roll over those five toes. This model doesn't really do justice, but it's really important that you understand that it flattens, you almost become flat-footed for a very short second, and then you become high arched for that push off. So it needs to happen, both things need to happen, flat, arch, flat arch. So those that are stuck with one or the other have issues. If you have a high arch, you don't really splay all that much and shock absorb. And if you basically, if you have a flat foot, you can have very difficult propelling yourself and getting power off that. You really land, land a little bit better, but you may not be able to get that way. So we're gonna agree that this is the, the tipping point here because this is roughly where you wanna have that balance. I'm trying to do it right now, but basically, if you've got all that, your heel's pretty heavy, you wanna be at the, at the ideal pivot access point that goes right underneath your ankle. And that's where you should land. You should be coming down and as your body, if your legs are up here, you're landing right here, not here. Like I said, that kind of creates a lot of instability 
for your hip and your and your knee um, and then boom and then you push off like that so that's ideally you want to be able to push off think of that puma think of the those you know wild animals out in safari really being able to claw the ground we should be able to do that with our shoes without our shoes so yeah that's pretty much the the mo most important keys about how to get a better foot action with your walk then gets you the ability to push off with your hips all right so here are my beautiful feet uh i would say this is not the most ideal foot for walking mechanics but i'm going to go through this explanation with you what happens is we got our hind foot here we've got our mid foot here and here's our forefoot now like i said before if you land on your your heels or if you actually try to do heel to toe it locks out your knee really compresses if you land more of that hind midfoot you have the ability to have a little bit more control if you land on the midfoot itself it's a little bit more wobbly and if you land on the forefoot you can see how much more excursion i have and excess uh, shear that can happen at the knee and the hip so let's what has to happen is when your foot hits the ground right about there it lands my body is above it this is a perfect skewer stay straight you don't want this to move this way you don't want this to move this way if your ankle's already this way guess what you're going to be this way if your ankle's already this way it's going to be this way so we want it that perfect then what has to happen is as my foot comes down that midfoot starts flattening so this becomes more of your classic flat foot like i said this becomes flattening because we're trying to cover as much surface area to handle my weight. I'm over over 200 pounds and I gotta have, I need more surface area to handle it. So I'm not, you know, really putting a lot of pressure in a lot of, a lot of other places. What happens as I get past, as my body starts moving past here, I'm starting to re-supinate. This midfoot starts rotating from here back so I can get that clawing action. And then what happens is my toes shoot forward, shoot out and forward, as you can see right there. And then we have this metatarsal break, which is right about here. And we're trying to get right into that. And that's uh, the best way you're hitting all, you see how these almost start lining up together. You know, so once again, a little bit more is like we rock through here this goes down you can see it flattening because this still how do i know it's good this is still straight and then it starts recalibrating again this still stays straight this starts coming back up and then i can claw and push off all right so here's a side shot of my foot and once again here's the the hind foot mid foot and forefoot as soon as I land on that front of my heel, you'll see that this arch already starts moving towards the inside of my body, which is that flat footedness. As I get past this area, so as it goes, 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 goes here, you'll see that this starts rotating back and my toes now start doing their action, which is splaying forward and out. So you wanna go forward and out. Now, as I get to a certain, that metatarsal break, right here it starts creating that arch again here here and then i can push off all five toes is the goal. so here's a little bit more regular action you can kind of see that so now you have a better understanding of what actually has to happen at the feet so that you have a better ability to propel yourself and avoid injuries of course there's lots of things that can happen if you're landing incorrectly and your foot's landing and you end up with injuries to your knees your shins your calves your poor toes you know some people get bunions because they're over pronating and that sucks so we've got some great exercises that will connect you with so if you're not getting those proper splaying or push off we, we totally recommend things like the metatarsal break we'll link those in cards above so check that out and yeah we're always updating our knowledge. We'd love to hear your feedback. Please leave any comments that you gave it a shot, you gave it a try, and that you're walking better, hit more pain-free. That's our goal for everybody that's on this video. And if you're just looking for knowledge, that's also good too. So yeah, if you haven't subscribed yet, we'd love for you to subscribe and support us. We wanna keep pushing for better stuff out there and for you to share it to the public. I'm Dr. Lin. Remember, we heal smarter, not harder.